Hey, what's happening gamers? It's KYP here and welcome back to the K-Wings Let's Plays channel. Today will be kind of a live video because I'm going to basically instruct people that are new to Splatoon 3 on what to do when you first start the game. So as you guys have seen, I have played this morning several hours. I got to know the game a little bit and it's great to see everyone coming into the chat. Usually I would do this as a regular video, but I'm going to do it live, so great to see you guys. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to Kaming's Let's Plays if you're new. And let's get started. We're going to go into Splatoon 3, talking to you guys and gals about everything that you need to know. So this will absolutely be a video you guys can watch back in case you guys don't know anything at all about Splatoon 3. Okay, so when you first start out, you're going to actually... Do your hair color, check your eye color. You're going to do go through a mini uh, tutorial on how to shoot the balloons and basically choose if you're going to be a um, inkling or an octoling. So once you've done that, you're going to end up right here where I am, right in the square. And as you guys can see, I have played for a little bit of time, a couple hours. Splatoon 3 just came out and I wanted to show you guys exactly what you need to know, where I kind of got confused or wasn't sure where to go for certain things that I needed to do in the game. And I'm just going to make a short, uh, quick video to show you guys where that is. Maybe this uh, video will actually um, be shorter than an hour stream. I will definitely get to some of the super chats and highlighted messages at the end. So thank you so much for the highlighted message. Splatoon three time. That's right. Awesome. So I am recording this video live. Maybe in the future I will end up recording videos similar to this, but upload them. But I just didn't have time today because the game just came out. So I wanted to t show you guys exactly what you need to do. So we just started out at the uh, Plaza Square and right over here to the left, you're going to see this guy. Now, if you go down here, he actually is going to introduce you to the story mode. We can go there right really quick and just check it out for one second. But I haven't actually done the story mode yet. So basically, this video is just going to be kind of telling you guys what you need to do. Um, so you, so you kind of know where you're going. As soon as you get over here, he's going to have a fun little conversation with you, which I already kind of did. And then after that, you're going to be going through all of these kind of obstacles and learning how to deal with all kinds of stuff. And it looks like we got another cutscene, um, but that's all right. So yeah, this is going to be your story mode. I haven't really gotten into it. It's really fun. This old guy, I always forget his name, but he's always fun from all the Splatoon games that he's been in. So we're just going to go back to um, the Splatsville area. And now I kind of know the name of the game. Or, I'm sorry, the town, actually. So, yeah. So, like I said, the story mode is right over here. You're going to need to, first of all, you're going to need a weapon. But once you go into this first weapon shop, they're going to kick you right out. You actually have to be a level 2 to even get a weapon here. But once you do, you're going to notice a change from the last Splatoon game. So, Splatoon 2, you had to earn your money and buy weapons. But, of course, as you can see here, we are not actually paying with money anymore. You're going to get tickets for your newest weapons. So, that's a completely different kind of currency than the money that you're going to pay for your hats and shoes. And every tier that you go up, you are going to get about three new weapons. Once you get to a level five, you are going to unlock the katana, which you see right here with me. And I believe the... Um, crossbow weapon is unlocked at level four. So that is pretty cool. We've got the katana here. It's looking really, really cool. And I've had a lot of fun playing with it. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's really neat. So you're going to need to be level two to get over here. So like I said, first of all, they're going to drop you right here in the middle of the town square going to want to walk all the way up the stairs and you can get into levels right away. Um, you can make a player name, you can get into battles right away. But even before that, I'm going to show you guys something kind of interesting. If you're completely new to the game, you can talk to this lady over here. She is some kind of police lady. I'm not sure what her name is. 
Okay, so you can actually go on recon. This is your recon guide. You can actually go to different areas of the game and check them out before you before you even end up doing any battles at all. So if you want to get used to the different places that you're going to be battling, then you might want to, you know, go to this recon guide and check out different places that you're going to be battling, like I just said. So this is the game. Um, if you've seen YouTubers and other people like that being on a battlefield that's completely alone, uh, yeah, that's not something that was just because of early access. You can actually do that yourself. Once you get the game, you can actually come here anytime you want and just, you know, flop around or swim around and try out the, the battles. One thing that was really cool for me, which I thought was kind of neat, once I actually was able to do this recon thing, is when I was playing this in the Splatfest world uh, premiere, I was never able to get over here to the other side and aha, uh -huh, I got there. So finally, I got in the other team's area in this uh, level, which I could never do while someone was shooting at me from this end. So that was really cool. So we're gonna leave that recon area. I'm just gonna give you guys an overview of all of the different places that you guys need to know where to go once Splatoon um, 3 actually comes out tomorrow. So the next place you're gonna see, which is really close to you over here, is this is very, very, very important. Um, you would think that this place is not important at all, but you're gonna actually need to visit this shop and I think you actually have to buy something in it before you unlock the lockers. And so that did really uh, kind of catch me up when I was streaming earlier today because they said you have to visit um, Hotlandia, I think this, uh, uh, Hotlantis. So you have to visit this store and I believe you have to buy something from it. These are things that you can buy for your locker. So just for the sake of showing it off, we're just gonna buy, I don't know, um, we'll buy one of these items here, we'll buy this item, and we'll put it in our locker, which I will show you guys where that is right after this. So that's gonna have fun and interesting things for your locker, and if you have not visited this store, before you try to find your locker, the lockers will be shut and they will not allow you to get in them. They will not be open at all. So you must visit um, Hotlantis, which is the store over here before you get to your locker. So now that we visited Hotlantis, let's go right over here and check out our lockers. So um, I will try to get to a few questions today if I am able to, um, but right now I'm just trying to make kind of like a really basic video on how to basically play Splatoon 3 if you're completely new. So right over here, you guys can see, here are some people that are on my friends list. Hello, Pokewood Theater. And they um, are able to play Splatoon 3 right now. So you can definitely try to join them, talk to them, see what kind of gear. I already gave Pokewood a fresh for his gear because he looks pretty styling over there. You can also talk to this cat who's always kind of hanging out and he gives you tips about the next thing that you need to do talking about you know leveling up your gear and some other things and I really wish the cat would have said neon instead of meow but I do like how he says meow at the end of every phrase you can definitely get some fun upgrades for battling over here and they sell um, both food and drink and the drinks actually do give you the ability to um, level up faster certain items such as your speed, your ink recovery, and quick respawn and different things like that. So I feel like this is going to be really helpful as you want to level your character up more and more during the game. And, of course, I don't have any um, ability to get any of these yet because I just started playing the game. But these are fun, um, very delicious looking snacks you can get too. And it's kind of cute. They even have a little um, thing over here where it looks like it's showing what credit card she's accepting. Here's also a little thing for prizes, but this is kind of a... It doesn't really matter as much. We're going to go right for what's most important. So when you come right over in here to the main area for um, 
for doing your turf war battles and other battles you are gonna go right over here this is the main place that you're gonna battle but if you're looking for your locker when you need to store some of your stuff this place over here when you first start out is gonna be all blocked off and this took me a while to figure out how to get in here basically you have to have gone to that hot Lantis store before you come here you have to have purchased I believe one thing of gear and then once you come over here it will actually open and if you come here before it opens it will have a sign that says you know you need to go to hot Lantis before you come in here once you do that this will open and these doors will not be black anymore they'll be clear and you can come right in now you can go over to your locker and I already designed it a little bit I'm really bad at designing the locker but I can kind of show you guys a little bit how that works so um, it's kind of harder than it seems. You can grab things and kind of place them other places. So let's see, let's grab the glasses. Oh my goodness. And yeah, so there we go. And yeah, so it's a little bit like they, they showed it very um, simplified when they were showing it on Nintendo Treehouse, but you do have to kind of like twist things around and, um, you know, you can move it. You can move items and you have stickers, which are a lot easier to place than the other items that are in your locker. So we are going to try to add something to our locker. Let's see if we can go to our menu. So we just um, bought um, a couple items here and we have a splat bomb. That's kind of exciting. So we'll try to put it right over here. Let's see if we can get it in our locker. Okay, so there you go. So you can kind of put fun things in your locker, put a few stickers and some other things that you can buy at Hotlantis. So it's pretty fun. And then you just push finish and your locker changes and people can kind of see what you put in your locker. Here's some other people that are playing the game that are much better at designing the lockers than me. And if you have a huge weapon like this, you can actually move the shelves in your locker so it can fit um, a bigger weapon. Otherwise it will not fit if you have a shelf right in the middle. After that, there's kind of like a little lounge area, which is pretty cute, honestly. And the way the game is designed is really neat. And uh, there's just so many little details. We've got ketchup here. Um, you got some headphones and different things that you would find in a lounge area. It kind of looks like an employee lounge. So it's really cute. Uh, and looks like there are some more lockers over here. So very cute. Looks like some people have done some pretty good um, work on um, doing their lockers. So after that, you're going to want to go right over here and you're going to start a match. I don't know if I'm actually going to do a match, but you know what? For the sake of this video, let's just try it. Let's just start it. We'll probably do one match. So after you come in here, you press A on regular battle or whatever kind of battle you want to do. Then you can go right over here and while you're waiting for the battle, you can actually just practice on these dummies. And actually, there are several different practice areas to go to. So um, there's a practice area in the local play and there's also a practice um, area in the um, salmon run. So I will definitely show that off in this video also. So I will just probably show one battle in this because I'm mainly kind of doing this video to kind of explain to people that um, are just starting Splatoon 3 where you need to go for different things like that. And I don't really want to jump out of the battle, but um, I think this is actually a new stage I haven't seen yet. So honestly, um, if you guys are just new to Splatoon 3, this game plays you know, pretty much 90% uh, like Splatoon 2. There are added features in it. Um, I would say the Splatana is really fun. Like I said, you can unlock that at about um, level five. So it took me about two and a half hours to uh, do that or three hours. So I was really happy when I finally unlocked it. And it does work really well for splatting bad guys. It also uh, paints really well and I think as I'm kind of talking and trying to explain how to play this game, I may end up getting like um, yeeted a little bit by people. 
And, uh, yeah, now my cat's deciding to come by right when I'm trying to, like, explain to people how to play the game. So, so yeah, this is a, this, actually, I've never seen this stage yet in Splatoon 3, but we do remember this stage from Splatoon 2. And, uh, yeah, actually, um, I mean, this game is, it's just like, it's just like Splatoon 2, so it's a lot of fun. And uh, I may end up exiting out of the match just because I don't really want to be like 20 minutes um, just in one match. So my teammates might get really mad at me, but I might end up doing that. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, it's just, it's completely like Splatoon 2. The game is a lot of fun and you're able to upgrade. Maybe I can actually show you guys. I'll keep playing this. So I can show you guys exactly what happens when, you know, you upgrade and you're in a match and, um, you know, how you upgrade your stuff and all that. So if you're completely new to Splatoon um, in general, um, you know, it's, this is a game that's a lot of fun. There's a lot of, you know, pro players. There's a lot of people that are just coming in and there's a lot of people in between. The game is really good at kind of matching you up with people more towards your skill level. When you first come into the game, it's going to set you up as your name was just player, and you're gonna play against other people that are just coming into the game. After that, um, you can make a name for yourself, and you can get right into the matches really quick, right away. And it is a ton of fun to play. It's just as fun as Splatoon 2. Um, if you're just starting out playing on the day it releases, then you're gonna basically encounter a lot of really, really good players because they've been waiting for this game for a long time. And like I was saying during my live stream, Splatoon is the ultimate like epitome of the phrase like, get down, knocked down seven times, get up eight. Um, basically you're gonna get kicked pretty hard at the beginning um, when you first start playing. But after you get your gear leveled up a little bit, you're gonna wanna get like a little speed boost, make maybe a uh, power saver for your, um, you know, super move, maybe like an ink saver or ink resistant um, thing for your, for your boots, for your hats or for your shirt. Um, yeah, once you start doing that and get some of up your upgrades for your items that you're wearing, then you're gonna do a lot better. Um, because I was actually starting out dying all the time and after I started upgrading, as you can see, my shoes and my shirt and my, uh, glasses, then I started doing a lot better. So, yeah, so that, that was a lot of fun. I was able to show you guys that. Um, I can show you guys right over here. We've got a cute little lounge area and there's all kinds of little details in the game that... Um, you know, we didn't really have all of these details in Splatoon 2, so this is really cute that you've got so many different things. You, It's kind of like they made a world and made you b kind of believe that all these, like, little, um, sea people are doing their daily tasks while you're playing Splatoon, which is super cute. And, uh, yeah, you can just kind of hang out. There's, um, arcade machines and lounge areas and just... All kinds of fun stuff for you to do. If you guys want to turn off motion controls or change your character, all you have to do is press plus and this is your equip menu. So you're going to go right over here. When you start out, they're going to give you the starting weapon, which is right over here. After that, they're going to give you a couple tickets. What I did for my first tickets was I got the dualies and the splatter shot. And after that, I got the splat roller. So um, I've gotten five tickets so far, or actually four, I guess. But I am a level five at the moment. And then when I got a couple more tickets, I tried out the tri-stringer, which is a fun long-range weapon, and also the splatana. And then after that, you're going to want to upgrade some of your um, clothing, and I'll show you guys how to do that. But like I said, to change and um, kind of edit if you want motion controls or not, or other things about your character, all you have to do to change anything about your character is just press plus, which is the equip menu. You want to go all the way over here to where it says other, and go right over here where it says off, motion controls off, and then make sure you press back and then back again and it will save whatever you just did. 
So that's pretty fun. That basically explains it. So just to reiterate, when you come here, you're going to see a black wall. If you go over here, it's going to say, you know, you need to go to, um, uh, I think it was, uh, uh, Atlantis. I forgot this. The Hot Atlantis, I think, is the name of the store. And then you're just going to go to that store that I showed you where you can get the stickers and all that stuff for your locker. Once you actually buy something from that store, then it will unlock that so you can actually design your locker and it's super easy to do. Okay, I'm going to show you guys the next thing you might want to know about, um, which is salmon run so we showed you guys how to do the regular battles salmon run is right over here you're gonna talk to mr. bear and you can start your shift I can kind of show you guys um, exactly how this works there's a lot more stuff added to salmon run so we're just gonna go right into it so I started my shift and just like in the regular um, turf war where you're over there waiting for your your battle to start there is a practice realm or round not realm but a practice area over here where you can practice um basically splatting like these salmon that are basically dummy fish and you can practice swimming over here and putting their eggs in the basket so it's pretty cute that they have so many um practice rounds in this game for splatoon 3 i'm just in love with Splatoon 3 so far. It's so much fun and I'm so excited that I got to play it um, somewhat early. So it says time to go to work. So I guess we're going to work. All right, and I noticed that my uh, I've been playing for three hours this morning, so my controller did not have a uh, a ton of battery. So I'm just plugging that in right now. So as you guys can see, the new Salmon Run area is pretty cool looking. They've added a lot to it. There are all kinds of different modes now where you can actually practice battling different bosses. You can come here anytime and. Um, uh, Mr. I think his name is Mr. Grizzle. I keep forgetting. He's the bear. Your bear boss will, you know, help you battle different bosses. And I did show that off in my stream where you can kind of bring different bosses to this battle area and practice. And, um, yeah, it's, it's added a lot and I'm excited to see everything that they've added. I've gotten to see a few things they've added to the salmon run. And so far it's, it's a ton of fun and uh, you know there's new enemies there's all kinds of stuff and that's what I like about um, Splatoon is they always they always make it uh, approachable for new people and also people that have played for a long time so yeah basically I'm just showing up a little bit off about Salmon Run and it's basically the same as you know it before where you're given a um, a uh, weapon and you don't really get to choose but there are some new aspects to salmon run one of the cool things i have seen so far is obviously the new enemies but also um you can throw the eggs when you're near the goal or if there's going to be a fish that's about to take you down you can throw the egg so that he won't get the egg so i should be able to show that off a little bit um in just a second So as you know, like in the original Splatoon 2, you'd have to swim all the way to the um, egg basket to actually put it in there. But like I was saying, in this one, you can actually throw it if you need to. So we're going to show that off a little bit and uh, see if we can throw the egg today. And it's great to see everyone in the chat. Thanks so much for hanging out. And I hope you guys enjoy um just a little preview of Splatoon 3 don't forget to subscribe if you're new to King of Lots Plays we're going to do a lot of Splatoon 3 coverage and don't forget to hit that like button um it will really help the video out and comment below what are you guys most excited about for uh Splatoon 3 thanks everyone
All right, so hopefully we'll get an egg here and I'll be able to show off how to actually throw the egg. But we haven't really gotten an egg yet, so I'm kind of waiting for that. And as you guys can see, there's like a really cool environment over here. They've they've really updated all the backgrounds and environments of so many parts of Splatoon 3. So, so much of it has just a really cool look. Like, so many people were asking me um, while I was streaming this earlier, is this any different than Splatoon uh, 2? And honestly, it is the same game, but they just have updated, added so many things that people have wanted. It's basically Splatoon uh, 2 cranked up to 11. So I haven't really been able to show me throw anything, but as you guys could see, that guy, yep, he just threw one there. And, uh, yep, some of our, there we go. There we go, I was able to throw it. <laughs> so we could throw, you can actually sit over here and throw the egg from over here, and then you don't actually, um, you don't actually have to uh, swim all the way there. So that's pretty cool. And I was hoping we would die by now so I could go on to the next part of what I was trying to show people, but looks like the team that I'm with is pretty good. So we're just gonna kind of, uh, you know, play a little bit more Salmon Run so you guys can see it maybe. Maybe we'll see some new characters that um, we haven't seen before. So yeah, like I was saying, the, the some of the cool things about um, Salmon Run, and I'll show you later, is there is a uh, there's a cool kind of like employee lounge in Salmon Run. There's um, you know a little training area where you can train on fish dummies, which is pretty cute. There's also an area where you can kind of look at this uh, training booklet and it will tell you everything that you need to know in case you miss anything in training. You can always read the booklet back and see um, what Mr. Grizzco wanted you to do. And uh, there is a, a really cool training mode in this game where you can actually bring bosses into this area and um, basically practice fighting them. So you can get to know different bosses how to defeat them, what are their weaknesses, and different things like that. So that's really cool. I thought that was a really cool thing that they added. Um, maybe we'll be able to show that a little bit. And the employee lounge for Grisco looks really cute, and I'll be able to show that off a tiny bit too. And so far, this game is just kind of really, it just really looks, I'd say almost beautiful. It's really cute. There's so many cool details in it. And, um, I'm gonna try to get this egg. Wow, okay, these <laughs> these fish are really biting today, literally. Biting and hitting us with hands. Alright, so I'm I feel like I'm gonna sabotage my team just so I can kind of be done. Because I'm I'm kind of done. I kinda wanna go on to the next area, but all right, so good job team. Well, let's see you've harvested 36 golden eggs. So honestly, we didn't do too badly um, There's also a really cool thing in this uh, salmon run where you can actually change your outfit based on how amazing you're doing So there we go. A lot of those people are actually playing from other countries, which is awesome um, I've been playing with people from different time zones all day. So I've been having a lot of fun. I'm actually going to leave even though I would really love to stay because I have other things to do today. But um, like I'll just show you guys a little overview of the area over here. So like I said, this is the very cute, I think this is the most adorable thing in the game, a salmon run practice area. You pretend these are the baby and big salmon, shoot them, and then you can actually go over here and practice getting the egg, stealing it, and putting it so I'll just show you guys right here, basically, there we go. So I just threw it. If you guys didn't see, I'll just do it again. So you can actually literally throw the egg into the box so you don't have to swim it all the way there. So that's really cool and I think that's a really cool feature. So also, it looks like Pokewood is playing Salmon Run again. Awesome. Good to see you again, Pokewood. So here is Mr. Grizzco. I'm going to show you guys some cool things about the employee lounge for Salmon Run. First of all, you can check this book out, the employee handbook. 
It will tell you all the things maybe that you missed or you weren't paying attention to when he was explaining. And you can also look at the bosses. Um, I believe, let's see if we can figure out the way we can actually do the, the training. Um, there is a way where you can actually go there and he can train you by bringing different bosses to the field. And I'm trying to remember how to do that. So this is, this is the first reward I actually got. 16,000. Uh, so that's pretty good. And I can't buy any of these. These you have to get with silver coins. But we could get... Um, looks like you can actually get a new banner with some of the stuff you get. Um, you can always get more fighting salmon. So I don't have any gold. Okay, never mind. So I got... What did I get exactly? 16,000. Um, oh, I must have gotten 16,000 gold in some other currency. All right, so like I was saying, there's this cute little ramen setup where it looks like it's like a little lounge for the employees, washing machine. Probably our stuff gets dirty out there in the field. And um, yeah, so you can change gear. So if you get, you know, if you do really well, you can actually get a, um, a different color outfit, which is really cute. So you start out with orange and you can get green or yellow. So that's super cute, and I know that there is an, an area where um, you can actually just kind of train. Um, let me see. Private job. Take on practice job with friends. And let's see. Yeah, there is a training area, but I kind of forgot where that was. Let's see. Uh so, yeah, I'll have to maybe show that off in another video. And I'll also check my stream for that because I did do that on my stream. So, yeah, again, this is really cute. It just looks super adorable. And that's the Salmon Run area. So many updates for Salmon Run. And, uh, yeah, I'm super excited about it. So we'll just go head out into the world and we'll check out some more things that you can do in Splatoon 3. Now, I don't really want to show this off, but we're going to show off something that, I don't know, I think that I, once I did this, I think that this is the one and only time that I was going to do that, which is over here in the alleyway, you can actually play the game of basically, it's kind of like Tetris, table turf battle. Okay, so I don't really know what you get from this, but why don't we play, we can play against a baby jelly. So basically, all you have to do is come over here, start the battle, and um, you can eventually probably make your own deck, but we'll just go with starter deck. So this game is actually super easy to play. It's actually like putting a puzzle together, and you can actually, one thing you need to know about playing this game is you can actually rotate the pieces. So we're going to go with whatever we have um, here. I'm going to... Uh, I think what we're gonna do is you're gonna play this game just like Splatoon. You want to get as far down in the enemy's territory as possible and you want to keep them from getting any more territory. So we're actually gonna rotate this and there we go. Okay, and I'm going to um, try to kind of try to kind of get them from being able to um, Okay, to do anything. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to try to keep them from being able to get any territory with me at all. Um, alright, so. So it looks like you might be able to, um, actually paint over some of the territory. I didn't really do that last time because I was kind of doing a beginner thing. So that's kind of interesting. Um, let's see. We'll do that. So I guess it depends on um, like a number of factors if you can paint over it or not. Okay, so we're just going to go right over here. So yeah, I mean this game, I don't know if this game is that exciting, but it's basically like playing Splatoon. Um, you know, you can just rotate stuff and... You, you you can't really overpaint what you painted over, which is the only which is the only catch of the game. So um, you know you, you can't really paint over it once you've already painted it. So it's 
it's kind of like um, fitting together a puzzle. You can't put two pieces overlapping each other in a puzzle. All right, so let me just do this. I'm going to try to keep him from getting in my territory, so I'm just going to rotate this. And there we go. So I don't really know. We're going to keep playing, I guess, and see. He's got 56 territory, and I've got 49. Um, yeah, so this is, I don't think this is the most exciting part of the game at all. But it's, I'm just kind of showing it off because it's here. Um, I don't really see Luke playing this at all. Um, but I might play it, especially if it gets rewards, I might end up playing it. Um, so yeah. And I can kind of, uh, let's see. And next time, uh, next place we're gonna look in, we're gonna look at the, um, the local play area and I will show you guys some of the shops so that should be pretty fun so we're gonna show that off in just one second and honestly okay looks like we're doing pretty well um, if you are not able to fit a piece in all you have to do is say pass and then you're gonna select the piece that you don't want and they'll get rid of that piece and they'll give you a different piece um, that appears to be the way that they, they're doing it. Um, I'm still getting used to the game, um, so we're getting used to it little by little. Okay, and I think we can still do this one. So I'm still able to put pieces in, and that guy has long gone. He doesn't have any room left. So yeah, my strategy was correct. You want to push forward as much as possible. And then after that, you kind of want to paint back. So it's kind of the same strategy as pushing uh, or playing Splatoon, uh, Tar 4. You want to kind of push the enemy back towards their goal. And then you can kind of fill out the back of your territory to um, win. So I don't really know what you win yet, but I'm kind of done. I This isn't the most interesting thing I've ever done in my life, but I'm just showing it off because I'm trying to show everything that is in the game in this um, video so yeah so that was kind of interesting um next up we're going to show you guys where local play is so once you get to the main area where you basically have your locker um like i just showed you guys you have your locker and you can do turf war and different battles online with people which is right in here basically you want to come right over here and we already showed you guys where the salmon run area is, which you want to go down these stairs. And it makes sense because that's kind of where you would go. It's kind of a dirty job, I guess. <laughs> um, destroying salmon and taking their young. <laughs> um, so right next to the salmon area is the um, local play area. So this is kind of cute. If you have um, two switches in one house and you want to play next to each other, you can visit this local play area. You can do salmon run local play, private battle local play, and a couple other things. So this is kind of cute. It kind of is designed like a birthday party and it has a fun area over here. I don't really know if you can access your locker here. Looks like you can't. So you have to go to the actual online battle area to access your locker. But this is kind of neat. They have yet another area for training over here. So you can practice different kinds of um, weapons. And uh, we can just try different things over here. I can actually show you guys um, a few different weapons while I'm at it. We've got the Splatana, which you mainly have to be, I believe, at level 5 to get that. And honestly, it's pretty cool. It's, it's pretty neat. Uh, you got some very cool um, super moves with it and some other things. So, yeah, maybe if we upgrade enough or if, if we use enough paint, we can show the super move. But it's got the hammer super move. All right, next up, we can show you guys the... Um, oh my gosh, what is this called again? I always forget. Tri Stringer. This is a really cool weapon. It shoots three um three at once i think it's a really good long range weapon if you jump if you jump it actually shoots it sideways so it can get kind of a, a better um so here we go as you guys can see on the wall so i kind of showed shot that um vertically if you go if you jump so let's see i think um 
Yeah, it should be a little bit concentrated if you jump. So there we go. Let's see, there we go. So actually, ah, I thought that would. So I guess you kind of have to get right up next to them sometimes. Okay, and I'll just kind of show off a couple more things, which I don't really have a ton of things yet. But the dualies, I did try to use them. A lot of people really like these. Um, honestly, they're pretty cool, and it has the really cool. Um, it has the really cool crab super move. Maybe we'll be able to show that off um, in this area. We'll see. <laughs> um, you can always, you can also, after you're done um, basically painting this whole training area, you can use something called the cleanup, and I'll show you guys that. So here we go. We've got our super move ready, and we are the crab. So if you guys already played the Worldwide Splatfest, you guys would have seen the crab. It's a really cool looking and uh, it's a pretty cool super move it also has um, it had little uh, bombs I could have used or um, special shots but I didn't quite show that off and uh, let's uh, show let's see let's see um, we already showed this 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 and I'll just show you guys what the the first splat roller that you get I think you can unlock this at a level like two or three so it you know it it uses a lot of ink, but it does cover a tremendous area. And, you know, every single weapon kind of has their own little super move. It's got those little running bombs, which are pretty cool. Um, I will say that I started out with this. It's one of my favorite weapons in every Splatoon game. The, the regular, um, the regular splatter shot and... I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Splattershot Jr. I really like it a lot. And um, also, one of the first weapons I got, actually, I think the first... Oh, the first weapon I got was Dualies. After this, um, I got the Splattershot, the regular one. And honestly, it packs a pretty good punch. And it covers a lot of area. So, you know, I find myself using the Splattershot um, or the Katana... I haven't really, or Splatana, I haven't really used the other weapons that I have very much. So that's my favorite so far, Splattershot and the Splatana. But all of them are really cool and, uh, you know, I'm sure as I get used to them, I'll use other weapons more. So we can actually talk to the receptionist and clean up. So once you push clean up, then basically we cleaned all our paint. So that was pretty cool. So, like I was saying, this is the local area. You can play locally with people. Couch play, um, that people have another Switch that are coming over to your house or brother and sister or your parents and you can kind of play together. Um, so, yeah. So, like I said, this is the Salmon Run area. That's where you need to go. We've got local play. We have um, the online play over here. I didn't really talk to this guy too much, um, and he basically explains, um, all right, so he says I'm not connected to the internet, which is weird, but I am, so I don't really know what's going on with that, but um, this is a kind of a neat place to go. You can kind of see um, Fry and, uh, and Shiver and Big Man right over here, and you can... Hide your cursor by pressing ZL. I am told that if you stare at them long enough, they'll wave at you, which is kind of cute. So there you go. You uh, can kind of watch them a little bit as they're at work. All right, so I see we've been streaming for about 43 minutes and I don't really want to make this video too long. So I showed you guys where you have to go for the, um, the main event over here where you can kind of uh, get to your locker in this area, which is right at the top of the stairs and right through these double doors. You can also do online battles, private battles, and other special battles. And uh, over here, like I said, you can do local play. Then we've got Salmon Run is right over here down those doors, remember? Salmon Run is the orange and green, and it's where all the muddy stuff looks. This kind of looks uh, muddy, and um, that 
kind of, I think, is the logo for Salmon Run up there. I'm not sure, but yeah, just remember the orange doors with the green background, and you have to go down the stairs for Salmon Run. So I'm just going to show you guys a few more things. Like I said, you get start started right over here. You can talk to this lady if you want to check out the, um, the, the stages and just check them out and kind of get get used to them without anyone around. I've actually never tried tower control, uh, so maybe I could just kind of uh, take a look at one of the stages. All right, so let's try this. So these are the recon like I showed you guys at the beginning. Um, this is right here, and I actually haven't really tried the recon very much, so maybe I'll just check it out for one minute. So you can kind of check out new stages you haven't seen. And this is tower control, so I, I don't really know how that would work with recon. But looks like you can kind of practice on your own. So if everyone keeps kind of hitting you off of the tower and you just don't know how to, um, you know, how to play tower control or you just need to get used to the game, you can kind of play it just on your own and practice right here. And then, um, you know, then, you know, it will help you get used to the game. And uh, it's kind of like if you play any sport, you know, practicing on your own helps a lot. And you can also probably try out weapons and just kind of have fun. So, and you can leave at any time. So you can just leave. Um, so that's kind of neat. I kind of like that, that you can practice without anyone there, everyone throwing paint at you. So, and um, I don't know if I said it before, but when you first start out, this is the story mode guy right over here, this old guy. And he's pretty fun. Uh, this is where we are going to do a video of this later tonight. If you guys want to check the stream out later tonight at 1030 in the evening, Eastern Standard Time on Kaming's Let's Plays, we will be doing a story mode episode number one on that. And my husband will be joining me for that. So... Um, both of us run this channel together and that's why we're called the K wings if you guys are new so please don't forget to um, turn on those notifications subscribe if you're new and um, like the video if you could and uh, it will help us out tremendously and also it will help you get informed of all our videos and streams which we stream probably three to four to five times a day all right so here's where you're gonna get new weapons and um, I don't really know what he just told me. He just kind of told me, oh, I don't think I have any more tickets to get new weapons. So if I use all my tickets, he won't really let me get anything, I don't think. I'm offline right now. That's weird. Well, I don't know why I would be offline. So, uh, that's really strange. Well, I'll just show you guys. I have no idea why my, um, my character would be offline because I was just playing a battle. But uh, we'll just show you guys kind of the, the different places anyway. I have no idea why it kind of went offline all of a sudden, but maybe I've been having trouble with my internet. Who knows? So, yeah, I don't know why this is happening. Otherwise, I would kind of show you guys what you need to do to, to get different clothing and things like that. So I'll just kind of show you guys where the shops are. Somebody kind of gave me a cool tip here. Um, you can press L and R just like in the other game where you can press L and R to go from shop to shop. And I would have shown you that, but this guy is literally um, kicking me out. So honestly, I don't know why my internet is getting really weird. Um, I don't know why. That's very strange. Uh, so I literally was just playing online just a second ago, played Salmon Run and um, all kinds of battles with people. So it must be a fluke. Come in, come in. Welcome to the crush station. Oh no, you're offline. So, who knows? I did want to show you guys a really cool video showing you guys all of the shoes and everything. And I have no idea why I, I just suddenly went offline. I'm kind of upset about it, but at least I can show you guys. You're just going to need to go to these different shops over here. Here's where your um, weapon is going to be, like your splat roller and all that. Um, here is where you're gonna need to go up these stairs and um, you can talk to this guy over here who's a laid-back character and um, you can kind of get I believe these are the hats Let's see. and uh, Mr. Coco is the one who sells you some sneakers so yeah I feel kind of disappointed that I wasn't able to kind of show you guys 
me buying a few things. I have no idea why my character would be offline. I literally have no clue why that would happen. But that's okay. We'll show you guys a few more things. So I showed you guys the shops. Again, I'll just kind of tell you guys one more time. Um, you have to go here before you can unlock your locker. So if you are trying to get your locker, you must go to this shop and you must buy an item in it. And obviously my, my thing is offline for some reason, so it's not letting me buy it. That is very strange, actually. So sometimes when I'm streaming, um, I don't know, I, I don't know if something weird happens when I just start streaming. But, um, alright. So, yeah, so you have to buy something for, um, uh, basically from Hotlantis. Once you buy something from this shop, you can buy a sticker or any kind of item at all. Then you can go right up to those top of the stairs and you can put that in your locker, which I showed you guys at the beginning of this video. So I'm not going to show you guys again, but the lockers are to the right of where you're going to do your, um, where you're going to do your turf war battles. And just, just basically a skip to the front of this video if you guys missed that part. And uh, the only other thing I need to show you guys, if you're new to Splatoon, is right over here is where you can write a fun and cute message. But unfortunately, because I'm offline, it's not showing, it's not allowing me to. So I have no idea why my character went offline. Of course, this would happen right when I'm trying to make a video on this. But this mailbox right here is where you're going to draw a fun um, kind of like you know, hey, I'm new to Splatoon 3, or let's go Octolings, or let's go um, Inklings, and just make a fun picture, or whatever you want, or root for your special team um, for the Splatfest, and then you can kind of post it on social media. You can also post it to um, the board here for um, Splatoon 3. So basically, I think I showed you guys everything that you guys need to know. All of the shops that you need are right here on the right side. And um, you get started out right, right in the center square here. You have to go to this old guy over here for the story mode. And as soon as you start out, when they start you right out here, you're going to want to go right up to the top of the steps because you're not going to be able to get in these shops until you're level two to four. So what you're going to want to do is go right over here, go all the way to the top of these stairs and start your battle. Start practicing. You can, like I said before, you can kind of practice in the lobby. Um, and I don't know, it's kicking me out, but basically you go right in there, you can practice and right to the right of you are those fun lockers. Oh, okay, good. It's letting me actually go over here. So even though I'm not online, it's actually allowing me in here. Good. So, yep. So right over here, guys and gals is where your locker is. It'll be all dark, but once you go to Hotlantis, you can open it up and design your own locker. And then you can start your um, next battle. Go right over here, click regular battle, and be ready to go. And then you can actually just kind of hang out and uh, practice on the practice um, area. And what's really cool is, as you guys can see, they are doing their news segment after you started. They do do their news segment at the beginning where you can kind of see a cute video of them. But while you're playing, they try not to be in your way. And it's kind of like a radio or bulletin at the top. And I kind of like that where it doesn't interrupt your playing. And you can keep playing without having to basically um, skip through everything that they're saying. So, all right, guys and gals, I think that's pretty much everything that you need to know. There is this little thing over here, which I don't remember exactly what this is. Um, we'll just check it out real quick because I've never done this. Okay, so these are new titles you can get and different things that you can get for your little banner. So thanks again, guys and gals, for watching this video. Um, those of you guys who are hanging out live, thank you guys so much. 
If you guys want to check out my live stream I did earlier, I showed three hours of Splatoon 3, and I really appreciate everyone watching. Um, sorry I wasn't able to get to tons of stuff in the chat because I was just trying to make kind of like a fun informational video for anyone who is completely new to Splatoon 3. So if you guys are completely new to Splatoon, don't worry. There's a lot of people that are completely new and all of us who have played before are really excited to welcome new people and um, this is not the kind of game where people are kind of like stay out I don't want new people this is a very welcoming and fun community so I hope you guys will consider picking up Splatoon 3 because we'd love to have you guys play with us thanks so much for watching today and I will see you guys um, for our next video for Kaming's Let's Plays at 5 30 8 30 and 10 30 um, for the Splatoon stream um, Eastern Time on Kaming's Let's Plays. Thanks so much for watching everyone and I will see you guys next time. God bless. Happy gaming. See ya!